Yes guys, it's that time of once again and more My Team content on the channel here today as we surpass the halfway point of the season as we arrive for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Real quick guys, if you missed the previous episode at Silverstone, probably the di most difficult weekend of the season, then go check it out guys. The 110 max difficulty AI around there is ridiculous they're so tough to beat so if you want to go check out the previous episode and watch me struggle a little bit then uh, yeah i'll leave a link up in the top right hand corner of your screen but with that said we're here at the hungaring this weekend and it's a tricky one for me because this track again is a pretty strong one for the ai but again i trust our car to deliver and hopefully help me out and get me over the line so yeah guys we're going to jump into things if you're going to enjoy today's episode then slap a like and hit subscribe if you're new and uh, let's get the hungarian grand prix weekend underway now here we are then back in the laptop and we look at the weather forecast for the weekend and there is no rain expected which is great news that takes us on to the r&d graph updates and mercedes actually bring a pretty big upgrade actually and um they close the gap quite a lot also elsewhere williams ferrari you know a lot of teams actually bring a lot of upgrades and generally speaking the field gets a bit closer this weekend we have a major aerodynamic upgrade which should arrive at the end of this episode so stay tuned for that i hope that will help us out in future races but with that said we move into practice and again hungary is a tricky one for me because historically i've always done pretty well here but the ai are pretty tough to beat you've got to be on your a game and you know make sure you nail it and i think strategy is a really key element in the race as well so we got through practice quite well uh, the pace was relatively strong not as strong as i expected and again like i said it's a tricky one for me because this track is one of the AI's stronger ones i'd say and um, as we look at the practice results we only went top by half a tenth over charles leclerc the ferraris were looking very quick this weekend and we only just about went p1 on soft tires which is quite surprising so we scored about a thousand R&D points between myself and George and with that we move into qualifying because again we're feeling good qualifying is going to be interesting because Hungary is known as Monaco without barriers so this session is quite important in terms of getting a good grid slot and trying to start as high up as possible so Silverstone we qualified P9 in the last race so let's see how this one goes as we jump into qualifying. Right, a little bit of an electrical problem at the moment. We're working on it now, so don't worry. We're going to get you out there as soon as possible. No, that wasn't ideal, but luckily we got out there in the end. On my first run, though, I had a bit of, tr a bit of trouble with traffic. And um, you can see there, getting a bit of understeer, running a bit wide, and just generally struggling with the grip a little bit. And um, I had this issue all weekend. The car generally felt good. But I was having some oversteer issues um, with the setup and I tried a few things and I wasn't able to really resolve it. It seems like it's more of a, maybe a car thing um, because our car is so fast. I'm struggling to hold onto the rear tires a little bit maybe. Um, either way, we go P6 on our first run, which is not great. But then again, nobody actually knocked us off P6 as we then head on to my second lap. And this one was my best lap of qualifying. So let's go for a full lap here at the Hungaroring. And there we go across the line and we improve by near enough half a second and we move up to third place behind Russell and Bottas and we then cut onto my final running qualifying and I was about a tenth and a half to almost two tenths up at this point. Um, the lap was going really, really well, but then unfortunately I just hit a bit of traffic in the form of the racing point up ahead and uh, also personally myself I had a bit of a scruffy 
enter the ladder. But at this point, I was starting to get some dirty air, and that gives you understeer. And I just wasn't able to get the car turned around as quick. I then got a bit of oversteer at the plasma corner. That sent me wide. And generally speaking, I messed up my lap. And then the understeer right at the end, they're sending me really, really wide out the final corner. And I wasn't able to improve, which was a bit of a shame because we was about a tenth and a half up. And that lap would have given us P3. But at the end of qualifying, it's going to be George Russell on pole. Valtteri Bottas, P2, and Danny Kofia, third place in the Alpha Tauri, and they are going so, so strong lately. They were great in Silverstone, and all season long, they've been very impressive, especially with their one-lap pace. Um, both Ferrari, Sebastian Vettel and Leclerc, P5 and P6, so confirming their Friday pace and that their upgrades are working. And of course, this isn't as much of a power circuit, so there are a lot more on the pace this weekend. Alex Albon, P7, ahead of Stroll, Hamilton and Lando Norris, who rounds off the top 10. And with that, we then move into a team acclaim after qualifying and also the rivalry breakdown in which we outscore uh, Lewis Hamilton once again to start off the new rivalry as we beat him last time. And we're going to try and do the same thing again. And also very small gains to the acclaim all round. Um, the real big gains come after the race. But guys, that is going to be it for qualifying here today. We're now going to move into Sunday for the Hungarian Grand Prix. It's race day in Budapest as we get ready for another round of the Formula One World Championship. We don't expect too many retirements at this track. There are plenty of current and former drivers with flawless finish rates here. In particular, Ralph Schumacher. He made it across the line in all 10 of his Hungarian Grand Prix starts. We're northeast of Budapest for the race today at the 2.7 mile Hungaro Ring Circuit. 14 corners here, eight to the right and six to the left on a track where downforce is king and passing is notoriously difficult. Joining me for today's race once again is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Martinez. That was a great podium in the last race. So can they keep that momentum going this weekend? There are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. George Russell did very well in qualifying yesterday and will start today's race from pole position. And Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Kvyat, Martinez, Sebastian Vettel and Leclerc, Albon, Stroll, Hamilton and Lando Norris, Perez, Ocon, Carlos Sainz and Verstappen, Gasly, Magnussen, Nick de Vries and Jack Aitken. Giovinazzi, Rojan, Schumacher, and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. Here we go then, guys. It's time for the Hungarian Grand Prix. We start from fourth place on the grid. George Russell on pole, and we've got a Mercedes and an Alfa Tauri ahead of us. So it's going to be an exciting race, I feel like. We've definitely got the car for it to try and deliver a result. And usually when we qualify quite well, we tend to race even better. So I'm feeling good. There's going to be a key element of strategy today to win this race. I've done it in past seasons, and it works really well. So around this track, most of the AI tend to go for about six, seven, eight laps on soft tires, and then they box. Now, what will happen is they will box and feed out into traffic, you know, cars that are on hards or mediums outside the top 10. So to avoid that, I'm going to try and go very smooth on my tires and go a lot longer in the first. And if I can get to like lap 10, 12, 13, maybe even, I'm not sure how far I can go, but basically as far as possible, that's going to basically allow me to overcut as many cars as possible and in the process hopefully overcut a lot of those guys who will get stuck in traffic. So fuel-wise, I've underfueled by half a lap, 0 0.5. I could have gone for more, but I'm going to play it safe um, because I feel like I'm, I'm going to need a bit of fuel performance, especially when those pit stops take place and we go a bit longer in terms of our first stint. And uh, strategy-wise, soft to hard tyre, no rain expected, so it's going to be relatively straightforward. But first of all, let's tackle the start and turn one. Maybe we can make up a few places and not make things even easier for us here today right here we go then let's get first gear selected try and get that clean start lights out and away we go good traction from us we get away reasonably well actually second phase a bit scruffy as we pick up some wheel spin down towards turn one though we're gonna go down the inside of Danny Kvyat here try and pick up that position P3 already Kvyat on the curb it's gonna be a drag race looks like the Alpha Terry's got the legs on us we're going to go the long way around at turn two. There we go. That's inside for turn three. And there we go. Nice overtake. P3 for us straight away. Russell crucially holds on to the lead. Bottas in P2. 
Let's see what the pace is like. I feel like we can definitely get past both of these guys one by one and uh, push up towards P1. But then again, I could be surprised. Russell's race pace may be very strong. So let's see how the race goes. We're going to try and settle into a bit of a rhythm here. Like I said before, the start front up, we've got great pace. And I'm going to try and use that. But for the first two laps, I always use full power. So we're going to have to wait until they probably turn their engines down before we start to make any kind of proper overtake attempts. Portas doesn't have the pace. Russell's pulled out of the RS range on the Mercedes driver. And uh, we're starting to close up and put some pressure on him. Gonna have to wait until DRS is enabled, so next lap could be the one. DRS is being enabled this lap. We can use DRS when you are within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Yep. I think Russell's got it under control now, so we're gonna try and get past Bottas now with the DRS, hopefully. Oh, yellow flag. I think that's behind us. We'll find out shortly who that is. I think it's Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari. Yes, it is. Confirmation. Will there be a virtual safety car or a full safety car? It looks like there won't be, which I don't mind. So uh, we can try and chase Bottas, but I've lost a bit of ground actually in the middle sector. So I'm not really close enough to challenge Rattery just yet. Struggling for grip now behind Bottas here. Just really can't seem to get any kind of front grip. The dirt here is quite strong it seems and actually Kafiat is closing up on me here. And Russell's pulling away. So at the minute, there's no way through. I'm kind of just a bit stuck, really. There's no way of me getting past Bottas. I'm not really sure where I'm going to pass him. Um, we'll keep trying, obviously. But for now, in that crucial final sector, I can't seem to get close enough to Valtteri, which is quite frustrating. Okay, Bottas is definitely struggling for pace now. I'm starting to put some big pressure on him. Russell has really pulled away out front. Oh, again, a lot of dirty air through there. Got Kvyat behind as well, who also seems quicker than... Bottas and maybe even me as well as Bottas gets a bit loose there. He had a slight correction. Valtteri struggling now on his tyres it looks like. This is my chance as Russell pits. That's an early stop from George. Especially because he was leading the race. He was comfortable out front. Not quite enough on the straight to really close in on VB there. We're going to try and get the car back through here. But I just can't get the traction. Fiat pit as well on that lap. Just trying to put any kind of pressure on Bottas, but I think he's going to pit this lap anyway. But we've just got a lot more pace than him. Hopefully we'll get released into clean air and I can use these tyres because I feel like I can definitely go quicker. Let's see then, will Bottas pit? Yes, he does as we get a bit of oversteer there. That's going to give me DRS and release me into some clean air. So we're going to go a bit longer this race. You can see Perez P5 on mediums. He's the first of the cars. No, we're not Jeff. Um, he's the first of the cars on that kind of alternate strategy on those medium tires. So we're going to see what the gap is in a couple of laps time. You know, see how we compare to Perez. That will give us a good reference in terms of what our pace is. If the gap increases, and that's a good sign. To be fair, Russell's rejoining P4, but he's gone for medium. So Russell two stop in this race at least. Pace is still respectable. We know we're about one second to 1.3 off our personal best, but the gap to Perez is going up which is a good reference. So we're going to pit probably this lap and uh, strap on the hard tyres. We've done enough. Looking at Magnus, I want to try and maybe slot in where he is around there somewhere. That would be nice. So we're going to box this lap. So in lap has to be perfect. Okay, then here we go. Russell up to P2. He's got past Perez and that's cost Perez a bit more time. We're going to box for the hard compound tyres. Like I said, I'm hoping to rejoin. Oh, that's not going to help. Bit of a mistake there on the pit entry. That's a bit of a shame. I'm hoping to rejoin where Magnussen is. So... Let's see how that works out for us. That definitely didn't help, that mistake there. Just going a bit too fast into the pit lane and also the, the left side tyre is just giving up in terms of grip. We need a quick stop here. Sub two seconds would be nice. 2.4, that's not bad. We're going to be okay here for P3, it looks like. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Signs will just come out ahead of us there, but that's okay. P4 on the hard tyres. And you can see Bottas, he's stuck in that train behind. I can see it on the minimap. So that has worked out beautifully. Just going a few more laps. We've overcut Bottas. And obviously only Russell is ahead of us. And he's on a two-stop strategy. So right now we are the net race leaders of this race. So just like that, we're now in the driving seat and in control. We're going to the end on these tyres now. So got to make sure I make them last until the very end of the race. But first of all, let's go about getting past Carlos Sainz first and foremost. Here we go then. Let's get past the McLaren. We've got plenty of grip on these. They feel so much better than the soft tyres. 
at the final corner. Rich Mix, Overtake, and DRS full power as we close in on the Renault-powered McLaren. Down towards turn one. Down the inside. Nice, easy move. And then get DRS for the second time. And job done. Back up to P3. Comfortable. Very comfortable. Closing in on Perez now. And I'll get DRS for the first time as we're on course for a personal best. Or at least I was. I lost a little bit in the final couple of corners. But pace is good. We're now going to try and put a move on Sergio here. Whose medium tyres are pretty old at this stage of the race. Let's see if we can get by it. Unfortunately, this straight just isn't long enough now for these cars. There's too much power. I'm going to try it though. Around the outside. Didn't quite work, but I'll get the drive through here. Can we challenge? Not quite. It looks like Perez can see the danger and he's running a bit of engine power to stay ahead. Going to keep this pressure on though. We can pass him maybe here. Perez goes defensive. We're going to try it around the outside. Perez runs me out of road. Not sure what he's doing there, but drag race. We're going to pick up the inside line and there we go. We're through. It's a good thing I know how the AR behave, you know. Every single time you try and go around the outside and they're on the inside line, they, for some reason, instead of committing to the corner, they straighten up the wheel and go straight. So that means they completely miss the apex and then they go into, they turn into you, you know, they're, they're driving into the side of you. So luckily I knew that was going to happen. So I managed to react quite easily. But uh, there we go, P2. Russell's actually got good pace here. It's going to be me versus George this race. He's quicker than me. I've lost a bit of time behind Perez. And George is going to be even quicker in the next stint once he puts the fresh tyres on. So I've got to pick up my pace a little bit here if I can. Looks like the majority of the medium tyre runners on the one stop are pitting on that lap. So Bottas will now recover back up to P3. But you can see how much time he's lost stuck in traffic. And that's why, you know, getting clean air or going long in the first stint is so important in terms of your race craft and your race result. At the minute, I'm matching Russell's pace. I can't go any quicker than this. Oof, getting a bit too rash there. Pushing the limits. I'm trying to pick up the pace. We're catching Russell slightly. And I mean slightly. I've gained like two tenths in the last two laps. But these times are not giving me much more performance at the minute. Russell pits again for the final time. Let's see where he rejoins. This lap is good for me, actually. Here we go. Final corner. Personal best, only just. I lost two tenths in the final sector, but there we go. We reclaim the lead. Russell back onto fresh mediums, and he's going to be how many seconds behind us? Let's have a look. How many seconds? It should be rejoining now. 7.8, 9, 8. Okay, so about 8 seconds behind us, let's say. Well, George is going to be quick. Fresh mediums, he's going to be on the pace, so... The chase is on. There's still plenty of laps to go here. And Martins are going to be very second-hand by the end of the race. So I've got to try and keep this pace up. There we go. Russell, 13.7. So he's about 1.1 quicker than me. Gap down to 6.3 already here. This is going to be tricky. Because I'm matching my personal best, but I've got no more pace in the tank. I'm kind of waiting for the fuel to burn off. That's what I can hope for. And the car gets larger and I get quicker. But you can see the gap just coming down. Oh, I'm pushing. Got to be careful. These tyres don't feel great. I've, I've definitely had better years this season for some reason with this car. These tyres don't feel as good as past seasons, but I'm still hanging in there. But Russell is still chipping away. Wow, Russell's really flying. That was only two tenths off my personal best with that little error. Oh, no. Oh, wow. I've got a bit of a dilemma on my hands because looking at the gap to Perez, do I try and defend from Russell on these tyres and keep track position or do I pit for softs and rejoin and put Russell under pressure? Oh, I don't know what to do. I think I might pit to be fair. We'll you at the end of this lap. I don't see why not. We may as well pit. Free pit stop. Obviously, we'll lose the lead, but will be much quicker on softs. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to defend when it comes to traction because I'm struggling on these tyres. So we're going to take a chance and go for the soft tyres. Here we go. Don't speed. There's no need to risk it. Right, we're going to box. For the soft tyres, Russell will inherit the race lead and currently has the fastest lap. 
Um, we should be able to rejoin comfortably in second place here. There's no threat as far as I'm aware. So soft tires, fresh softs. Exit, exit now. There we go. Away we go. We've got plenty of fuel as well, so we can burn this off. Only one stop to go. One stop left in this strategy. Right. Game on now. It's a straight fight. Me versus Russell for the race win. Who's going to take it? We're about to find out. Here we go then, guys. It's time for the restart. To be fair, George isn't backing us up too much here. Let's make sure we get the timing right on this and uh, use the soft tyres to put George under pressure straight away. Oh, that's good. That's a good restart there. Completely just dummy on the traction. Of course, the AR traction patrol. Always going to get a good start, but George there, fair play. What a start. Uh, that's not the case, Jeff. We're not stopping, mate. We're done for the day. <laughs> let's let's not think about that. Right. Obviously, the, the cars behind are not a threat, especially Perez holding everyone up on the hard tyre, so we can just go forward on these and use the pace, so let's crack on with it. The amount of grip I have, the difference compared to Russell through this middle sector is unbelievable. So much more just grip through the corners. I can just find grip everywhere. Fresh soft tyres doing the business for us. Here we go then. No DRS just yet, but we'll try and pass George here straight away. We can do this, come on. Easy does it through there. Final corner, perfect line. Try and get the traction down super early, and there we go. We'll pick up a fastest lap as well in the process. We're not really catching on the straight. Oh, fair enough, George actually really laying the brakes down. I could have gone a bit later, but George knows my tricks. It looks like, so uh, we're going to have to wait a bit longer here. Looks like uh, George wants this win really badly. Oh, crap. Whoops. That curb is so deadly, man. If you touch that inside curb, <sighs> it's game over. Luckily, I'm on the soft tires, so I managed to actually react to that. If I was on the hards, that would have been a spin, for sure. <sighs> oh, my goodness me pushing so much. I don't know what's going on with the rear end of the car, but I'm not getting any grip. That was scary. I can't seem to get close enough anymore to George now. I'm trying to push and close in. Now we've got DRS, but I just can't seem to get within range to get by. We'll keep trying. This time should be fine to the end of the race anyways, but we need to get this one done now. I'm a bit closer on this lap, but still not by a huge amount. Just trying to push these tyres. Russell gets a bit loose through the final corner there, but he still gets good drive. And I can't really get close enough here. We are gaining on the straight, but we're going to run out. Can we maybe challenge into the next corner? Not quite. I've got to say, I'm really impressed. Russell's hanging on, but his pace is so strong. I'm waiting for a bit of um, a drop-off in pace where he's used all of his fuel and energy, but it's not arriving. He's still pushing at full power here. Hopefully it's soon, because we're running out of laps. I'm really struggling for pace. These tires have gone really quickly. I mean, we're overheating the left front. That explains it. We're cooking the front. I'm just pushing too hard. I'm trying to get some grip in the dirty air. It's just not working. The left front's overheating. I can feel it. We've only got two laps of fuel left. But I'm having to really throw the car in this. This corner here, right there, that little right-hander with the traction zone where Russell just absolutely does me. And he gets enough of a gap that I can't close in. I don't think we're going to do this, boys. He's still running at full engine power after all these laps. And I'm running out of VRS deployment. It's game over. Russell's dropping me. I can't respond. I don't have his pace. Well, here we go. Russell's pulling away. He's got over a second gap to me now. I just can't keep up. So, fair play. I think I was doomed the other way. I don't think I would have been able to defend from him because his, his traction is unbelievable. And I'm struggling on, on these tyres, let alone the hard tyres, you know, at this stage. So, fair play. I can't believe he's kept up full power for those entire eight laps. That was very surprising. Either way, Russell wins it. We come home P2, and it's another 1-2 for the team. Great drive, great drive. We're really happy with that performance. A nearly flawless performance here then, and a commanding victory. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. 
We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. Welcome then to the podium, our top three drivers. What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. There we go then guys, the results are in. Unfortunately, it's not what I expected, but we do pick up the fastest lap. So that does give us an extra point, which kind of limits the damage and the points lost to our teammate, George Russell in the championship. Bottas finishes with us on the podium ahead of Sergio Perez, uh, Danny Fiat, Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz, Kevin Magnussen, Pierre Gasly, and Max Verstappen scoring just one point for Red Bull today. Albon P12 with Ocon splitting the Red Bulls. Hamilton only P13 as well. The two-stop strategy is not working out for him um, and Albon as well. De Vries P14 ahead of Aiken, Norris, Giovinazzi, Schumacher, Grosjean, Latifi, and then Stroll and Vettel out of the race. We then look at the driver standings and Russell cuts down the gap to 79 points, but still we're pretty comfortable out there and uh, we've got a nice buffer. So things are looking decent as Bottas overtakes Hamilton for P5 in the drivers championship we then move over to the constructors and we extend our lead 168 points clear of red bull who only scored one point today and we got a one two of maximum points so happy days and over 200 points clear of mercedes so we are dominating guys and it's a two-way fight for the championship and it's me versus george russell that is it though for the race here today we're now going to move into the laptop your team secured the top two positions is it safe to say you're a winning combination I think so. I think we're doing a great job and we've got the best car. Everything's going really well for us. So yeah, you could say that. How do you think this team will be feeling after that result? I'm not too sure. I think you'd probably have to ask them, to be honest. Will you be celebrating with your teammate tonight after their hard earned victory? Of course, you know, we're a team and uh, we want to always win and uh, do well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be celebrating with everyone tonight. How do you feel seeing your teammate up on the podium? It's great. I'm, I'm always happy for George. You know, that's what we signed him for. Great. Well, that's everything. Now, in terms of the rivalry breakdown, we outscore Hamilton once again. And we take an early lead, 7-3 to three, against the seven-time world champion. So happy days. And of course, it's looking pretty strong for us in terms of being able to win that rivalry already. In terms of acclaim, some small improvements for both of us. But crucially, as a team, we rank up to level 23. And we got up yet another level. So we are flying at the minute. In terms of cash bonuses, we get a full payout from all of our sponsors. Yet another race weekend where we achieve that. And then a couple of damage deductions, I'm guessing, due to the card damage we had in uh, qualifying but besides that a flawless weekend once again and a full payout well 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 then so we are back in the main menu but surprisingly we've had an upgrade file which is very rare at this stage now of this career so we are going to have to go ahead and repurchase the fouled major upgrade for the aerodynamics it should still arrive before the belgian grand prix which is great and we've still got enough points to throw another one on top of that so we are going to go for I'm tempted to go for this um, ultimate tire wear upgrade. I think that could work quite well for us. So we're going to go ahead and get that on the car. That should arrive before the Italian Grand Prix. And uh, with that done, we can now move back over to the calendar. Now we've got a press interview on the 8th. I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm probably going to skip it. I'm not that interested at this stage as we head into a season break. So we're going to assign a few activities. And considering what the options we have available to us, we're going to go for reaction training, and we're also going to throw on a sponsor event as a fundraiser to improve team acclaim. Um, not much we can really do there. And with that said, we can now skip ahead all the way until the season break. Well then, guys, there we go. We are ready for the season break. And that is going to be it for this episode 
here today. I'll be back once again, guys, in uh, not tomorrow, but the day after for another episode for the Belgian Grand Prix. So I'm very much looking forward to that and the start of the second half of the season. But for now, guys, that's going to be it from me here today. If you enjoyed it, snap a like on the video. Let's try and smash 900 likes for today's episode. Subscribe for more content like this as I'm trying to hit 55,000 subs by the end of the year. And finally, check out the two videos on your screen if you haven't seen them already. And with that said, guys, I shall bid you farewell and I'll see you next time for the Belgian Grand Prix. But until then, take care and it's goodbye from me.